when we say um, civil society, um, essentially, uh, when you say civil society, uh, uh, for me, the word that I normally use is citizens' organizations or people's organizations because civil society should be representing ordinary people. And uh, so in terms of the relationship between citizens' organizations or people's organizations and the government, uh, that's a very important relationship because ultimately uh, you know, there is a kind of a social contract between government and citizens because governments are there in order to support and improve the livelihoods and the lives of uh, their own people. But what happens in practice is that they often forget about that. So they, they once they occupy a position of power, they forget that they have been they're in there they're in, in the first place they are there to support the people and often they end up supporting a very small section of people so if you take china today you mentioned china for example now china has undoubtedly made very big progress in terms of improving the living standards of a very large section of people i mean there's no country in recent history which has lifted 400 million people out of poverty and we have to you know recognize that china has done this but the problem we have now is that alongside lifting people from poverty, there's been a massive increase in inequality. Uh, so the, the gap between the rich and the poor has massively increased. So China today has the highest number of billionaires in Asia, and much more than Japan or India. So you have a few people who become very rich. And once you have growing inequality like you have in China, then social tensions will increase. As you can imagine, if they're extreme... Uh, disparities between the rich and poor. So, and citizens' organization and civil society have a very important role to play in these situations because um, the government tends to be a bit far away from people, whereas civil society and citizens' organizations are closer to people. And I think China is struggling with this because uh, it's a new phenomenon in China. You didn't, and historically, you don't have these uh, kind of more organized civil society organizations. is a more recent phenomenon, and I think they are coming to terms with this. Um, and in my view, you know, I have, I have been saying in my previous interviews today that we cannot talk about China in a monolithic way because it's not one thing. I mean, it's too big a country. There are people at the governments at all levels. So, you know, when we think of China, we think of Beijing and one central government, but that's not China. And I come from India and I know that there is nothing, you, can't, you cannot even talk about India in a general sense because India is, what is India? It's nothing. <laughs> it's just a map. Uh, so China is the same. It's very complex. It's very diverse and we have to break it down. And it's a society in flux. Things are changing very rapidly. And the government itself, I'm sure, is grappling with these questions. Mm -hmm.